Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to create a trigger on a small table and then we'll capture events for the insert, update, and delete. Are you ready? All of the SQL that I perform in this video are available at this GitHub address. Let us create a very simple table for this project. Create table item. Item ID is an integer. It's also the primary key. Item type, item name, and a price. Notice all the fields are not null. Create table item audit. Notice item ID down to price. Those are the same columns from our first table item. I'm wrapping that with item audit. ID, notice that's an identity column, one for one, and that is the primary key for this table. Remember for item, it was just item was the primary key. Item audit ID, operation, create date, and user ID, those are the ones that are really important to this audit table. Now notice that being the primary key, the create date, I'm gonna get the get date from the system, and the user ID, I'm also gonna get the system user. Let's go ahead and create that table. Now we're gonna to have to do one little change. Notice on the column operation. Now I only want to process insert, update, and delete. Those are the only values that I want inside of this column. So notice I'm going to say alter table item audit. I'm going to add a constraint called check operation. This is a check constraint on this field. Let's go ahead and do that. Now if this is the first time you've seen a check constraint, let me show you what that's all about. So here I'm going to insert insert, lowercase insert, and then a a word that is not one of these. What happened? Well, let's start off at the worst case scenario. Someone tries to insert try INF. Now, because I have this check constraint, that failed. Notice on line 21 and 24, insert is case sensitive. So notice the inserts work fine regardless if it's all uppercase or all lowercase, but the try INS failed because it's not one of these values. For the table item, we have defined three triggers, and those triggers will fire on the following. On the insert command, this trigger will fire. On the update command, this trigger will fire. And when someone does a delete statement, after delete, this trigger will fire. Did you notice the keyword after before each command? I have highlighted rows 7 and 27 as two example. What does that mean? Well, very simply, after the insert command finishes storing a new row to the item table, this trigger would execute, hence the word after. As well, on the update and delete commands, the appropriate trigger will execute after each command has finished its job. Here is an interview question. When does the after insert update delete trigger execute? That's right. After your statement has completed its execution, then the trigger is executed. This trigger will fire and then it will take what I put in here inside of this one record and insert it into item audit. That's what this trigger does. Okay, so that is the insert trigger. Now on the update trigger, when I go an update command and I'm going to set item name to be something new, well then as soon as I hit save, the update trigger will fire. And this trigger will then populate, will do another row inside of item audit and it will tell me these are the changes it was. Notice it's coming from the table deleted. So this is kind of like the original data, the data before it was updated. Lastly, the delete. When I do a delete command, then the after delete will fire. And this fire will also do an insert into item audit. And notice it also comes from the deleted special temporary table. So hopefully you'll understand that each of these inserts, updates, and delete, they all source from either two tables, the inserted or the deleted. Just a moment ago, we created three triggers for the item table. Now we're going to do all that inside of one trigger. It's called TR item audit. Notice it's going to support insert, update, and delete. As we come into there, we're going to set no count on. I don't want to broadcast that we're doing this. I'm going to declare at operation as a varchar sick. Now look here. 
those are our two reserved tables. And I'm saying if exist, select star from deleted. The special temporary table deleted is used to store the results of two SQL commands, the update statement and the delete. The inserted temporary table stores a result from the inserted command. I have to warn you, the update statement also uses the special insert table. However, it will store the future state of the update statement, not the data in its original form. The bottom line, the update statement uses both internal tables. If exist in inserted, well, then it's an update clause. Else, it's a delete. Now, if it's not in deleted, then it's an insert. Okay, now based off that at operation on an insert, guess what? I'm gonna say from inserted. We're all gonna be going to item audit. I'll be doing the insert. Now remember, I set this declare variable at operation. Here, I use the set operator to set it appropriately. In this next section, notice on line 31, operation, guess what? I'm gonna be using that variable, at operation. In this case, the else supports the update and delete statements. Pretty sweet, yeah? And there you have the TR trigger item audit. And here is the question. Triggers are associated with what two internal temporary tables? That's right. Triggers use internal tables and only seen by triggers. It's inserted and deleted.